in the cabin next to us. Have you ever been on stage with so many people? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't read that paper, can you? I've tried. I think uh, you've heard me failing twice, so uh, please read this out. This is... Okay, so at each time there will be a translation in French that will also be available. It's on c3lingo.org. Ooh, good French. Now, will they announce the English translation in English, or will they... Now you have the chance to say hi to your mother. Well, that's not really good. Well, she's in Spain. All right, Spanish greeting to mother in Spain delivered. Thank you. That is uh, hall one, well, it's actually hall A. It's exciting, isn't it? I've got a pulse. So how about you? Do old men also have a pulse? <laughs> one of them does, the other, well. Right, shall we play a small game? You know the defragmenting thing. Uh, why don't you just... Fold down your table computers because one or other of you may have to stand up. And if you have a rucksack next to you because you believe your girlfriend will make it, please now stow your luggage below your seats and put up your hands if there's a seat next to you, free seat next to you. How many of you have sat, sat down before the break and waited? All right, we get it. So we can dispense with the defragmenting, right? And go to the fun. We have some facts for you. Um, shall we do the exercise for the closing? It worked very well in Hamburg. Whether it will work here, we'll see. You take this half and I'll take the other half. So we'll split it down the middle where the cameras are. You are my half. We would like to have a La Ola, a Mexican wave with you, because it's been such a long time, and a crashing La Mexican wave, please. We'd like to start there and now, please. Come on. Get going, yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, the other way round. With sound. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Really loud. One, two, three. Le Mexican wave. Welcome to Germany. I have, I have goosebumps. So, oh. right. And now to the facts. Facts. We have uh, done some research with the angels because, as you know, the angels are the people, well, you know them all, and we'll tell you why later. These are the people that organize everything. A huge applause for that to start with. Jetzt ruft mich and uh, now all call me. I, someone's calling me. Uh, always the same jokes, right? Is that a joke or is something happening somewhere? Oh. Now, all in all, we have, the figures are quite small, actually. 1,043 could have been 1,042 to make it sound better, right? But we have 1,043 person days that's 2,969 angels with at least one hour. Divided into uh, 40, 59 angel types. 59 angel types, so different tasks to do from collecting bottles to standing up here and entertaining you. 
and I've gone uh, with a 950 minimum minimum wage and uh, multiplying this. I know that we'd get in trouble for that. I'll get us out of there. Right. So, with a minimum wage of 950, you get 79,268 euros. But that is minimum wage, but you are IT people, right? And uh, I did it with, say, 99 euros per hour, the friendship rate, and that gets, it gets us to, how much was that? 200 and something thousand. Can I now bill the CCC for that? Um, and altogether, 2,400, 3,400 people signed up to register to, to Angel. Was it 5,400? So half of those that tried were only able to make it into helping out. So thanks a lot for that. It was definitely so more than 4,000. I've seen that. All right, now we are prepared. Now, who this year had this moment of I told you so? Who had this, had this at least once? Come on, people. That can't be right. Okay, now they're coming out with the family, the company. Ah, of course. Hang on. Yes. How knows, who knows someone who's had that moment? That's the way to ask. Who knows someone who's had that moment at least five times? Well, not so many less. But then the next talk isn't that bad for you. We'll give you some new fodder from these two, Security Nightmares, Ron and Frank, in the 13th edition. An applause. I think it's the 19th edition. It's 1-3 in hex. We'll see what they say. Peter? Hello. Thank you. Welcome to the Security Nightmares. Hello, Leipzig. Hello, Neuland. Hello, Territory of the Unknown. Nice to have you all here. The 19th edition on the 35th Congress. And uh, that, of course, is a certain limit for the Congress because I think two or three years ago, we told someone that everything that's older than 35 can actually go to a museum. So that means that next year, the Eiderstädter Bürgerhaus, the oldest location of the Congress. Oh, wasn't it the oldest? It's going to go there. Um, we'll have to research that, by the way. Um, all right. Who's here for the first time? All right. That's good. Less than previously. I think that's a good trend. And who of you can explain the basics of TCP IP. Mm -hmm. And who of you has done it, at, has learned it at this Congress? Hmm. No one. All right. Now we'll dig deeper. Who knows, who can explain the basics of SPXI, SPXIX, IR15? Well, not too bad. SNA? Uh -huh. Layer 1 and 2 of Wi-Fi? Ah, we've got a few Wi-Fi cable experts here. And uh, Laura 1. Interesting, it's always the same people showing up. Remember these guys. They are the ones we will need before the apocalypse and those that will have net after the apocalypse, maybe. Um, what's always funny is I, I always put those numbers into my converter and, and then see in which number system a nice number turns out. And this is the 23, 23rd event 
in octo. That's nice. So two, three in octo. And you see the notation there, zero, O, oh, two, three, and that reminds me of something. And then I thought, yes, that's the way I saw it anyway. Okay, and also the actual image of the year I've just seen a moment ago on Twitter and with the GDPR and the, the European regulation, the Santa Claus jokes have taken on a completely new dimension. Uh, he makes a list of children that are nice and those that are not so nice or naughty. And, of course, he will receive an official letter with a return envelope and has to comment on how he's going to delete the data. Uh, I think those information requests, those GDPR information requests are great. The, the delivery process, the most parents have these funny games where they either rent a father as a Santa Claus, or they find something that they improvise, and suddenly the sack with the presents is there, and the <coughs> Father Christmas is gone, and or Santa Claus. And uh, how do you then deliver that? Do you how do you deliver that request for information? Do you attach to the sack and hope that the sack will be collected? That and uh, will that be valid over that period of time from one year to the next? Ah, chaos post. That works. Uh, yes, chaos post would work. It arrived. I received postcards. Yes, and next year we can start with the 20-year review, but for now we would like to continue with the 10-year review because otherwise we'd have to do it the last 10 years all over again. Now, 10 years ago we had the... Uh, topic of better testers for new surveillance technology and it would be nice if German MPs could have been obliged because they always pass these laws but apparently, at least as far as we can see it they don't actually notice what they actually cause what they unleash because they may not be affected and if you would change, if you were to change that, then maybe the attitude would change as well. And um, something we had this year is that not the MPs but the minist ministries uh, try had innovative surveillance technology. At least there was a Trojan that, that uh, take over command and control over email, which I found innovative because there's not to, so much new in command and control there. So you send something, there's a reply. It's very comfortable this way, I think. Probably next year it will be existent as a chatbot as well. So, hey, Trojan! St yeah. Uh, and the other thing that's missing is that spam will be in stig steganography or uh, special cookies or something. It will be actually an innovative command and control system to get advertising cookies, the Trojans uh, act when you clicked on advertising and and the, tro the cookies then act as if they were the content you wanted or something. Um, in the same category, there was the issue of public data retention for all German members of parliament. And that did work within limits because the first WhatsApp groups were leaked, the, the contents of those. That started last year, didn't it? Um, so it didn't take 10 years, but nine. But this will only move on, from continue from here. And uh, we may have been a bit early there, but there's still hope. The trend is right. And... <coughs> yeah. Louder? The router issue 10 years ago was actually um, US authorities 3,500 faked routers with Cisco logo. Louder. We sh they want us to talk louder about the router to use the American pronunciation. Um, 
Ten years ago, the U.S. authorities uh, had 3,500 fake routers with Cisco logos, and they removed them and were a bit concerned. These were not Cisco routers. They just looked like they were. And this year, we had the hardware backdoor debate, which is kind of comprehensive. Um, we've got hardware implants in motherboards and by Supermicro that several cloud operators were using, but they didn't prove it and uh, they didn't bring forward the evidence. These images were all photoshopped. I think it took a week to come out that the images were all works of art. And uh, my assumption is that they heard about something that actually happened, but that wasn't what they actually reported on. And uh, the discussion is interesting when it went on and kind of created the background for Huawei because the Americans have been causing a bit of stress around the world to get Huawei out, saying that Chinese vectors were in there. And, and uh, this discussion I found amusing because um, there was this comment saying that the backdoors in American products weren't actually that rare. And it uh, the, the question now is whether the politics that are being conducted, which vector supplier would you like to have? Exactly. I mean, you can pick the little games where you first think, do they kick those out first where they had a backdoor but didn't, excuse me, fuck them? Or do they f kick the backdoor out first where they think somebody else has it? And do you, is that joke viable? You need three scanners, an American to catch the Russians, a Russian one to catch the Americans. Who was the third one? A Finnish one for the Swedes? <laughs> yeah. Equal, yeah, equal opportunity backdooring is the word. I mean, there's always space between a firewall and a firewall to add another firewall. Uh, the backdoor, hard, 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 where backdoor is, where another theme, uh, in the tunnels, they're sort of, they're sealed. And the question is, does the implant come off the line or is it installed in service? Uh, so they just sort of decide, we're going to weigh them. This year, they found out uh, way, way, Wayne doesn't help because they they make him so small that there is no difference. And now they know, and they know that they're being weighed, and so they just add, a, they tear, tear it out or flex it out, take a little bit out, so the additional chip is does not is not detected. So the next countermeasure is uh, to <laughs> see if it's rotational balance or not. And so you put it on a rotational tablet and find out if you shouldn't open them. Anyhow, because if it, the seal is broken, they're not compliant. And so they have to open one up that where they're completely sure that that's okay, just look and have a final check and then make a baseline from that and say that's the way all the others should act. And when are you going to rotate your servers around in your... Um, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> when you start rotating your servers, they're going to lose all the screws that hold them together. Oh, they're all SSD. Yeah. But still, <laughs> you got all the SSD chips lying in one end of the server. Yeah, that's a... Don't want to think about it. 
Oh yeah. Then they're they're the the, the, the ten years ago they had these um, spam mails from the commission from, killer spam um, mails. I am your killer today. I have got um, the order to kill you, but you can uh. buy your f liberty or your life. Would you just please uh, send the money or buy me some iTunes cards or maybe some packages? That was 10 years ago. There, there were no Bitcoins around then. So it was Hitman, like now. Hitman spammers. Hitman spammers, that's right. Yeah. That was the word. Thank you. <laughs> Um, what, <laughs> what were the bitcoins worth if you would have bought one ten years ago you bought one hamburger for them well in the meantime even that sort of has developed there was there was this article in Wired about somebody who knows somebody and did some research uh, who was this uh, who, who ran assassin uh, where you ordered them sort of you know get a website to order your assassin and they got different brands I think money for it yeah Bitcoin of course and talk about ESCO and, and, and it would go over an escrow account and if you send them some Bitcoin, and uh, oh yeah, the killer is informed, and two days later, and he's uh, he's on the way. Two days later, and um, oh, there was a slight discordant with the, the delays in operation. Delays in operation, <laughs> and he's stuck somewhere. And would you could, could you? Could you please send some more bitcoins because you ran out of petrol or whatever? <laughs> and another week. No, it didn't work that well. But he's got the money. And at a little slightly higher price, we could add somebody professional to make that job. Oh, there's loads of stories there. And in the end, and he took his way out of it. Uh, and he steal, in the end he just steals time and money from those who want to others killed and that would be morally completely complacent but that's an interesting you can make a nice story out of that yeah let's go on with the next one ten years ago we said um, what will social networks um, will be for data crimes the best but, and we should look at that in, in 10 years' time. <laughs> so, social data crimes in social networks. Oh, GSM safety leaks. Security uh, holes. Don't have to say anything. <laughs> oh, there's an interesting question. How many how, how many different versions of opening a GSM base station? Oh no, come on. The boards are from China. They're completely safe and secure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the national filters were up at that time. The browser plugin for to, to compare attitudes national on a national basis. We could have a VPN or a browser plugin to how the internet looks from another different perspective, or, or national boundaries, or what the others think about us. The view from the next door country? Never know. And in the meantime, that seems to happen already. And, and the upload, download filters, obviously. Uh, and it uh, seems to be more interesting what it looks like from the other country. It becomes more in uh, it's sort of virtual reality for all of us on a national state base. Nation but, states. 
Um, the interesting is, what does this website look like if I oh. don't call it with my cookies? <laughs> and I think the plugins for that are still lacking. There's still work to do there. At least there's a market because of location-based pricing. And uh, some people realize that when they empty their browser cache and throw all their cookies away and then ask again what the flight from A to B does cost, suddenly the price is very, very different. Often cheaper. Okay. Internet normalities. Oh, the normality update for the internet for 2018, partly from figures from 19, 2017, because we still uh, don't have the figures. There's four, four than that is definitely the 40 Android um, phones with the Trojan off the rack. Uh, that's rather efficient. And yeah, you have to make your money somehow. Um, there was a, a, a paper uh, that, where well, I thought that is really weird. Uh, that, that's Captain Obvious on his way. When I have DevOps, and and I explicitly put another Dev sick up, I'll be faster than normal. That's not no, that's not surprising. But it's what's surprising is maybe that you're. 11.5 times as fast. If you use, if you deploy it uh, 20 times faster, and that means you have to, you have to fix your security level at least 10 times as often to keep the level. Um, skimming attacks, damages from 1.0 to 2.2 million euro. Now, attacks on ATMs, that's not so interesting. The figures worsened slightly, but not that much. And what was interesting that behind this headline and a few others, uh, I didn't really notice it during the year. Only when I tried to tr look back across the whole year and in, within a time space of about one or two weeks, suddenly you see that many of these headlines say that uh, these 2.2 million euros damage are uh, only really 15%, uh, only 15 of those occurred in Germany because there are international accords now that moving the damage to the country with the lowest security level. And there are other items, reports saying that the damage was this and that figure and this amount had to be paid for ransomware. And, uh, and then behind you see, uh, you read that the insurance paid for it and okay, international treaties, insurances, interesting. I would have expected that uh, the security level would be raised because insurances expect things like that. Well, if you look at those ATMs, those cash points, the efforts you need for skimming, you can just get, get the money out directly, right? Bore a hole into it, USB poured in and convinced it to spit everything out. We had a talk. It doesn't work with the wireless keyboards. Uh, I think, oh, it does. I think every cash point should have a dongle for a wireless keyboard that would improve the service quality considerably. Google removed 700,000 evil apps. Apple removed many. So Google said that they had removed 700,000 evil apps from the Play Store. They at least give you a figure. Apple, it's a bit like the Eskimos and the snow. They have many words for snow and no precise figure. Well, the thing is that apps that are evil, particularly when it comes to tracking and data exfiltration, have become quite a business area and it's obviously not so easy to recognize these so that as soon as they enter the Play Store they could be sorted out. So it will be an interesting battleground uh, also with the devices that the makers, they buy components from all kinds of suppliers and if, particularly if you buy these cheap Android tablets you can run across an ad where that was pre-installed and Lenovo for example stopped that this year. Actually, that was last year, but this year they had to pay for that. 
and quite a lot. Uh, 7.3 million, that doesn't seem like a huge amount for a company like this, but surely it is something that internally could be used to improve things. Right. Um, now, another figure, more than 12 petabyte company data unprotected on the net, online. So someone put this figure out and said, I've been scanning V4, IPv4 and found 12 petabytes of company data. So because data are the oil of the 21st century, uh, this kind of nice data wealth, the oil is on the street. It, it swims on the lake. Um, it's swimming. It swims on the lake. You kind of slush around in there and... Uh, the, most of that, interestingly, was in some open S3 buckets or FTP servers. And uh, it was the case with Lucky Luke, wasn't it? Um, where they just pushed, uh, pinched the ground and then you had this oil gushing out and everyone walking around with blackened faces. And that's not the case with data, otherwise the researchers would look so different, right? But it is funny, isn't it? To, to um, have data wealth look like a toner explosion? Well, then I would be, something would happen to me uh, quicker than it does, right? Um, Tech support scams grew by 24%. That's this model where you call somebody um, and Kyle, somebody calls you, this is Microsoft calling. You have a virus on your computer, and we would like to repair that together with you. And um, uh, I always had the impression, yeah, but that doesn't happen in Germany for the language barrier. And actually, it seems to be, it, it's, it's growing, no question. The, the reports of that this is happening in 180 countries. But there are cases in Germany. So let's ask to the public, do you know somebody who's, who's had a virus call from Mac? Oh, hey, yeah, oh, some at least, a few. And who, who had the call in German? And who had the call in English? Oh, half and half. Wow. Uh -huh. We have a theory. We'll talk about that later. Interesting. Uh, applause for let, uh, an applause for Let's Encrypt. More than half of all public reachable certificates are... Uh, Fifty percent of all publicly uh, let's encrypt, and Microsoft trusts this. Uh, oh, since August, yeah, Microsoft is a, a careful company. They don't trust anybody, at least not immediately. Yeah. Oh, things about that, that that never stop. Like. Then the next years will go on for another ten years. Yeah. The, 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 what's really fascinating is the dimension of this. These IP addresses. There's, and some, sometimes there were up to five thousand hosts between behind one IP address, infected by WannaCry. How, how can you? How can you attain such infection rates? Maybe we need an old-timer hardware registration plaque outside. You know, old-timer in Germany, you're allowed to drive where other modern cars need a special license. <coughs> if an old-timer is 30 years old, maybe we'll have to lower that for 10 to 15 years. If if it's a 15 years, old, and then what do you do with it, with the the server? How, how do you handle that? Oh, single cell. 
uh, that, that in Germany, the, if you have an old timer, you get an H on your registration plate, and that's they call it a Hannibal Lecter sign. <laughs> Let's look back at this year. The Parliament hack in the uh, German Bundestag was the interior minister. Uh, so technically complicated. Oh, sophisticated. Sophisticated, that's right. The t tax money that was invested, that was invested to first um, clean up, and, uh, they w were invested properly because it was sophisticated. It was sophisticated use of tax money. Yeah, that was... Oh, when uh, our interior minister thinks something is sophisticated, well, yeah, okay. The, the, the British came around, uh, General Headquarters Central, so if there's something around that everybody knows we'd like to, to know, and because all these nasty people are encoding and, and encrypting and we can't... So we have to open their computers and use a, a mass exploit. So we have got to be able to open as many computers as possible. They want the right, and of course the means, 10, 100, 50, 100,000 computers to open them, proactive, just without, uh, just for the sake of it. Let's listen to what's happening. And expected, they need this jackpot trojan, jackpot trojan. Trojan, yeah. If you <laughs> if you install it properly, the people start telling you everything in the night, three o'clock in the morning. They, they don't define it. I don't on laptops or PCs, but that includes the television sets. And tomorrow, maybe the bar probably the Barbies. Barbie dolls, yeah. And, and the, the Barbie dolls. And, Al oh, Alexa, let's not forget Alexa. <laughs> oh, and the home board. And the Google, th the, the Google device, what is it called? What's it called? Right, the CIA communication systems discovered using Google. Now, of course, <laughs> normally we have many of what we report is technically very sophisticated. And... Uh, there was this story this year that uh, had been around a few years ago, but it always comes back up, and uh, that was that the CIA communication system that they used for uh, making arrangements with their sources in different countries using web systems that they had bought for millions of dollars from American an American government contractor, and uh, only that at some point the Iranians had placed a double agent in there, and uh, that told the Iranians what the website would look like that they use for communication and uh, then you could Google use for similar websites and found a few dozens of them and uh, then s monitored the people connected with that and, and took them and then talked to the Chinese that could contribute something as well and that led to the CIA uh, to, as a proof of its amazing e-government competency uh, had lost its all, whole agent networks in these countries and some actually died. So you see that e-government is a difficult task still. Even if you have techn technically sophisticated things to defend against. The technical term for that is a Google Doc. You could Google it. Um, right. The next thing is an absolute screamer because in Australia a, a law was passed th about the, the, called the Assistance and Access Bill, nicely abbreviated as ASS Bill by its fans and uh, there are great explanatory videos which are just amazingly funny and these then would like to introduce backdoors Want to be able, want to be allowed to introduce backdoors, and they want to go really wide. They want Australian citizens. They want to motivate, want to be able to motivate, to 
put backdoors in the companies where they work. And all that from a country that has another scandal going, which is called the Cabinet Files. What was that about, you ask? Well, the answer is a newspaper had several cup covers of files received those which had been on the second-hand market for those <laughs> for those pieces of furniture, but with content. They obviously for forgot to empty them before they put them on the market. So, I would now ask, why were they sold with content? Because we lost the keys. Right? Great. <laughs> so, Let us repeat what we said last year. This is a new business model. People under hypnosis, you could help them to, using hypnosis to remember their old passphrases. That will come. Amazing. Uh, one of the large debates uh, this year was TLS 1.3, where various participants in the debates were of the opinion that it is too safe, too secure, because you can't look into it anymore, at least not so easily. And, well, you have to remark the old security models where it was said you have to look, be able to look in, that said we have a, an inside network that we can trust, And then the trusted, the encrypted connections arrive, and because everything is safe within the network, we decrypt it at the entrance point, but that didn't quite work out in practice. If you look into these formerly encrypted data streams, if the Trojans start communicating via email, it gets difficult. So therefore, they say trustless networks should be built, so even internal networks are built so that you don't have trust to service only encrypted communications, and that's what this TLS 1.3 was actually intended for. Right, we will see how this will develop. Um, oh, the e-fail attack on SMIME and OpenPGP. Yeah. So-called e-fail attack. The details the are interesting because um, you should read this if you've got the time. We didn't quite include it here to bash it even further, but I don't know how you feel, but uh, this year I met two people already who I thought would officially be of the opinion that they cannot get this get to get their grips with the email encryption in their companies, so they gave up. And uh, does anyone else know anyone that gave up? Ah, only so few. Well, there's still hope then. Hmm. I believe we'll have to turn out the lights and then ask the question again. Ah, right. Who is in a company where they didn't ever start using PGP? Oh, ah. that's explained. <laughs> right. Who this year had to uh, explain... Let's try and explain this whole thing of encrypted email to their colleagues or heads, superiors. Well, that's not too bad, right? Um, oh, the, we had to uh, sort of quickly go through a couple of quite remarkable... Oh, <coughs> this denial of service for the GDPR. Uh, let's... I want to... Uh, we, we want... Who 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 thought there was that that thing with GDPR was all the stress was not worth it? Who liked it? Who thought it was funny? <laughs> okay. okay. Most of all, you were just amused. <coughs> What were? <yeah. coughs> Will you please, please, excuse me, click here so you can keep receiving the, all the news on the most emo, inno, innovative views. And nobody ran up. 
Or most of you never ran up to a lawyer or ran into a lawyer? No? Who had something to do with rotating, hyperventilating, hyperventilating, hyperventilating <laughs> GDPRs? People gone wild. Uh, oh, the, the best headline I loved, serious fault in a plugin, in a GDPR plugin for WordPress. I like that one. Microsoft's BitLocker trusts the firmware, co the company um, that does the firmware Uh, on their hard disk. That's the encryption on the hard disk. The encryption yeah. on the hard disks, yeah. Microsoft is a company that handles OAM requests and jobs every day. And they listen to OAMs every day. And look at this new driver and look, with this is coming and that and that. And then... And then they believe the hard disk that said, hey, I'm handling this completely. Um, yeah, yeah, everything is poisoned. <laughs> we, we, we had the topic and bad apps and trionized apps and browser plugins and downloads, DLLs, whatever, libraries. Sometimes from people that are cut off from outside, like soldiers, And, and, and but everybody has internet now, and at least they put their finger, get their fingers on it, and they get the bandwidth, and and they go to the dating apps and and and, and oh, fitness apps, yeah, the army goes to the fitness apps, yeah. Where do they train the super secret um, special forces? All you have to go do is look look worldwide where um, uh, where the fitness data comes in thickly where nobody lives, and this is probably where the special forces are training at the moment. Oh, there's this question: How do you guarantee data integrity? Integrity. Integrity of of, of um, open force. Open source, open source software. Sorry. Because uh, the better the security of the distribution infrastructure is, the uh, higher above the chain the attacks will go. Also, the bugs thing isn't the same, isn't just there with the normal software, but also malware itself. Uh, there was this interesting case where um, something happened in Saudi Arabia. A Trojan was found a more complex kind of malware that didn't work because it was buggy. It happens. Oh. Testing is hard. Let's go shopping. <laughs> oh, HP ILO. Um, Trojan, that's a new milestone in the integrated lights out. By Intel heißt es Management engine. Intel calls it Intel Management Engine. IBM calls it Integrated Management Vulnerable. They integrate the ransom trials. And HP was the first one. They were the first one that could, for their system, there was achievement unlocked. The first ransom trial around. The ransomware. Ransom ransomware trial, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, the. In the context of the things that have been smoldering for a long time, we had in OpenSSH, uh, a 19-year-old security hole was fixed in OpenSSH uh, that was used to better guess valid usernames. And uh, in that context, we wondered If you look at other things such as the OpenSSH eBerry rootkit uh, thing of what was that from 2013 or whatever, um, the, that has now 21 sub variants and it's as it is with normal vi uh, Windows viruses. Do we make too many Windows jokes 
and the 2003 server that still isn't switched off, or do we actually have to look at old versions of Linux and target those? And the answer is obviously yes. Who of you still knows a running system with a kernel 1, a 1 version kernel? Okay, 2, kernel version 2. Ah, yeah. We'll stop here because, well, I think this, this old time uh, registration ah, is. Yeah, that will be a thing again. That will be a. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have so, to understand. Talk about that yet? Yeah. So it's, with the, all these IoT devices that you will have to throw away because no kernel upgrades are happening, this will, be, this will get funny. Who of you is still maintaining an OS2 installation? Oh. Yes, another three. Warp. Still, still three. <laughs> right. Oh, the browser wall seems to be over. And Google One sort of looks like it. Microsoft gave up. That's not such a good news, but uh, that means that means Google is defining for the next time for the next years how much uh, Apple is going to invest in that. We'll see. Uh, the uh, monoculture click in the hmm. this is quite remarkable. Just as remarkable, this Google Assistant that booking restaurant tables by phone. Which one of you heard the audio demos? Ah, that many, but not all. But fascinating. The fascinating thing was not it calls and it said, this is the Google Assistant, I'd like to book a table. The crazy thing was what he answered when the other side, let me look. <laughs> when the other side answered, I have to look, and he said, mm, okay, yeah. The, the, the silent intermediate intonations that aren't really remarks, but just sort of transport. Yes, I've understood what I said and keep on going. The nonverbal Turing test. Uh, for us humans, yeah. If somebody calls you and does not... Um, clear his throat. Clear his throat. And don't trust him. He's probably a bot. <laughs> you should you know, put, put, put some test stretches in. And you, <laughs> you add something add like... Uh, Great deviation, lean and what? And if the other side doesn't say, huh? Uh, no. Or if he just says, mm, yeah, then you're probably mm, talking not to the guy. The question is whether we do this ourselves or whether we need an assistant for that. Right. Then... That gets us to keywords for the next year. Evil hard and software, networks, data is the headline. Sometimes we are off by a few years, but the trend that everything that you could imagine possibly now will receive a microprocessor. And of course, it needs a microprocessor. A microprocessor always needs software that runs on it. So that's why hardware is never just hardware, but also software every time. And this software wants to betray you. Actually, it doesn't want to do that. A thing doesn't want anything. It is capable of. It is compelled to. Uh, what this about is w everywhere you have processes now, whether it's useful or not, whether it makes sense or not, every light switch now cannot be imagined without a CPU in it. So you have to actually almost think, think that it will be the exception that nothing calculating will be in there. As soon as there are some LEDs that blink or display something, at least a battery controller is there. 
that will do its calculations and have a firmware and then there is data that's generated and these data will be stored somewhere and then they will get lost or leaked and that is due to the fact that software quality simply is bad and compliance testing you don't need at first you only need that later but just for it to work uh, or that to make people buy it you don't need that and that just brings such a flood of things onto the market made by people who are doing it for the first time and therefore that that's the way it has to go and then there's something else I read a very nice article from a Ben someone that was some, the headline was something like thinking about AI so how you should think about AI and he had a nice analogy which was that artificial intelligence these days or machine learning that is somewhat advanced is like a four-year-old or yeah a four-year-old child of either gender it never tires it doesn't want cookies and if you need a more another 30 you click once right and four-year-olds can do things that your computer cannot yet do pattern recognition, is there a rabbit in this picture, how many unicorns are those, those things. And of course, it's a fantastic analogy, because do you know how four-year-olds deal with family secrets? Exactly. Just like that. It's said that there are kindergartens where you have signs saying if you don't believe everything that your child says in kindergarten, it happens. Uh, what, what child says in kindergarten, then we don't believe anything that your child says happens at home. So the question yeah. is, what's the AI analogy for that? Well, they are just the same. So, hey Alexa, not everything I say is actually true. Or Alexa, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, okay. But not everything is bad, right? There are things that it do improve. Technical advances in defense and attack lead to phishing AI and anti-phishing anti AI. So, Apple is working hard on improving or hardening its operating system for PCs. Um, sandboxing has been introduced uh, at, at a large scale. Uh, uh, the things that are normal for smartphone and tablet operating systems because it was in there all along. And this, all, this whole IoT thing is all terrible, but what people directly interact with, that does get better if it is kept updated and what happens is that the attacks against all that IoT stuff are still happening with brute, brute, force, brute forcing old software vulnerabilities and so on but that middle range of the PC less is possible there all these locked up end product systems such as tablets more or less modern hardware where you cannot install your own operating system anymore where you have a few apps and the security of the system is supported by hardware security chips now these are a bit more a bit harder to attack and for the for us the question therefore was what is actually happening because evolution is going on of course and we never had the situation where the criminals were, were stopped by any of this, so the logic, logical consequence is that security more and more becomes a layer 8 problem. The problem is behind between the screen and the chair. And uh, we had a few ancestors, we've seen a few ancestors of this. There was an interesting Trojan that in a particular bank using an exploit in the tab next to the current one, was opening the home banking and told the home banking, oh, you've just received an, a transfer. 
you've just received 750 euros in a bank transfer and unfortunately that was an error and would you please like to retransfer this? So this wasn't a security attack, it was only an attack to what would be happening to you because you'd like to be an honest person. So people were transferring those 750 euros that they never received back somewhere and there is no security measure that can help because the people want this then. And I think that exactly this is where the future lies for attacks, that attacks more and more target the human brain and the technical attacks are just supporting measures. And the question then is, how do you do this? And humans are relatively impatient and, well, often at least distracted. I wouldn't say stupid, but distracted a lot. And that means that a nice task for a horde of 10,000 four-year-olds Hmm. A phishing AI, you could imagine. Uh, you, I want an ice cream. Can I have your mobile? We want. We all want our pocket money, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah. The I love you, Iris, when, when was this, 20, 18 years ago or so? So someone in a betting club told me that, I said, I'm, I <laughs> installed a Windows just for that purpose, to open that email because it came from my girlfriend. <laughs> so people go a long way to hear the message if the message, message is right. So... And the next thing is that every data accident that happens out there is fodder for that AI. So every little bit of data that gets lost helps some kind of AI to send you even better phishing emails. And the question is, who will have receive it first or have the AI first? And because everything is connected and it's not actually evil as such because phishing is just a form of marketing. Do something now, not buy me, but click me. So marketing is motivation and motivation is education. Education is happiness. So that's where we come full circle. This is all dual use. And the question it will be a very moral one. What is still okay? and what is not okay at all. Not okay at all is to convince me to buy iTunes cards to kind of pay off my tax debt or something stupid like that. But maybe I would like the software to press all my buttons so that even today I can learn five minutes of English. I would like to learn five minutes of English. Okay, uh, who do we give the right to manipulate us and with what motivation? And if you say learning English, you believe that you want to learn English. The question is, why do you believe you want to learn English? What software manipulated to, to that state of mind that you want to learn English? Maybe that software wants to sell you a journey, to, a trip to London or something. And anyway, you have translators, Ron and Frank. Um, and the question is, which kind of manipulation uh, of the moral on a technical or, or moral okay. basis yeah. and where do we draw the line as a society that will become a security issue it's a question of sec personal or mental security because we are dealing with AI then that can press our buttons and we do see very well what that could lead to with Facebook and co if on the other hand we have machine learning systems on the other side that make us get excited or angry then it's foreseeable that this whole debate cannot be postponed that much longer. How do you translate this into sports and business sections? Um, we think... Um, 
You gotta you, you lose the overview. Wh which data got lost today or this week on me? Who knows? Does does everybody knows my mother's maiden name yet? Did I avoid this trick? Oh, which one of these answers are already known? They're the services. Everybody should know them. Harold, have I been pawned? That's a website that collects all the, the registration um, and, and, and pawned passwords. And I can send in my email address and they will send me back all the passwords that have been associated with this in some leaks. And all these other leaks should be stored in different safe places like that. Otherwise, if somebody else finds all the porn passwords in one place, that might be another problem. And, and we need a sort of doxing manager that we need that, like a password manager. Where is my stolen data stored in a, in a safe place? Uh, uh, how, how, how do we got to... Oh, yeah. This is going the wrong way. This janitor's... Yeah, exercise to the... Oh. We'll ignore it and go to the next. And the bandwidth are getting larger. And the quality improves sometimes. And the world is moving away from telephone conferences together to, to, towards screen sharing conferences. And more and more people find out what we um, that uses a telephone consciousness and still uh, open up the camera. Um, more and more people. How many of you think that is raising that number? I think that was quite pure telcos suddenly now become video conferences just because the bandwidth is there. And who thinks that's helpful? Who thinks it's awful? Oh, I'd rather snore without being noticed. I can understand that. That you could you could you could monitor uh, your pulse or your breathing frequency. Uh, does my uh, the, does he start? Is he starting breathing heavily because I said the right or maybe the wrong thing? It might be a good idea. Maybe he just had too much coffee before. You know, that's it. But if that is a growing tendency, you, you can add some additional data. You could use pull that. But th you should be able to defend yourself against that. Uh, uh, as an in-app in purchase. buy purchase, you can you can defend against. You can click. Uh, what you want to be today, the cool one or poker face to poker face two fifty. Oh, complacent. Oh. Happy coworker. <laughs> Happy coworkers, five dollars. Yeah. Maybe sometimes you want to get annoyed about something that hasn't annoyed you for ages, and for your health, it's a lot better. Please, computer, can you go and complain for me because I don't want to be bothered. <laughs> Weren't there these emojis that you can steer the way you look at them? Um, and th there's there could be intelligent avatars that adapt to what you how you look at them or how you there's there's room for more in there. Yeah. And finally, we believe the question of the year. You interact with something. Is it a script? Is it machine learning? Is it our AI? Uh, we can't be human, won't be, wouldn't there? What's the difference? 
if it's PowerPoint, it's AI, and if it's Python, it's machine learning. Uh, yeah, it's PowerPoint engineering. Is that? <laughs> and if they put some quantum computers, blockchain, <laughs> and, and, and some quantum computers, yeah, it's definitely PowerPoint engineering. <laughs> Yeah, you have to handle them, and you're not, um, and you don't, you don't ask any whom am I talking with, but how can I solve the problem? Do I use a script? Do I need machine learning? Or do I still have to wait for AI? Yeah. Right. Yeah. In that sense, in that sense, uh, this time we are very much on time, or we would like to wish you a happy transition into the, the year 1984. The image is of Leipzig, Delitzscher Street. Oh, beautiful typo. That's a nice typo, yes, <laughs> I like that one. 